So Mika, thank you to be here today to receive this award to your career as thank a you legend. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you know that Monte Carlo is the, the, the country of Grand Prix, so we all have a passion, you know, for Formula One pilot. It's absolutely correct. Uh, uh, I, I've been having a privilege to live in, in Monaco already uh, roughly about 24 years. And uh, I've been experiencing uh, Monaco Grand Prix first time in year 91. Uh, last time when I raced here in, in Formula One car was in 2001. Yeah. And, and uh, absolutely great, great place and, and great place for the racing. Yeah, a unique place for racing. Oh, no? This circuit place. is very particular. It is indeed. And, and many, many, many times people ask me, I said, Mika, what a uh, race circuit you, what you prefer? Yeah. And, and I always, very often say that Monaco is one of the most fascinating. Yeah, fascinating, true. And challenging track to drive, but you need to have a good car. Otherwise, when you race in Monaco and if you don't have a good car, it can be a nightmare. Yeah, it can be... Keep the car in balance, oh, as wow. you were saying me before, because we were looking to the circuit and to the famous curve, yeah, the Fairmont curve. So yeah. you had many memories in that place. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, this this racetrack, it, you know, it, it brings me many many different memories. And and uh, because I had a I had a privilege to have great teammates uh, racing with me, same team like Arton Senna yes. in '93. I had uh, a time also when my teammate was Nigel Mansell. Alan Prost was a test driver for our team for certain times. These were great years for the Formula One. Yeah, so I, I really had an amazing time and, and uh, uh, Monaco racetrack is so emotionally, so powerful track that way you never forget when you go through the tunnel in the darkness yeah. and you come out with the bright light. You have such a strong memories inside in your brain that way uh, when you Go back in a history of time, you easily remember. Yeah, you were saying Don't that your, every lap your, happened, your, but... your heart was oh, yeah. beating. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. The artery the needle was absolutely on the limit. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic to discover, you know, the, the backstage, you know, of the race, to, to learn about the emotion of a pilot, because it's really full of emotion when you drive. Exactly, and, and, and again, Monaco is one of these racetracks which are emotionally uh, most challenging, not only physically, but emotionally to, to bring your concentration in the highest level. Because uh, Monaco is, a, is a, it's emotionally a very, very de demanding circuit because many companies who are involved in Formula One, uh, sponsoring Formula One, uh, all these companies they bring in the guests here and 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 uh, uh, a lot of team managers having a really great important meetings here for yeah, the future. Monaco is a wonderful place it's and wonderful everyone place. want to come here. Absolutely. So for the driver it's the time to succeed. Yeah. You cannot make a mistake. You have to, you have to succeed. Have to succeed. <laughs> so and you won two world championships, so you had great achievements in your yeah. career. Yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, I really uh, uh, I started my career in Formula 191. I was, I think, 22 or 23 years old. Uh, but it, it really took me seven years before I win my very first Grand Prix. Uh -huh. So seven years losing. Uh, also because of the car, maybe you have to find the right oh, yes. balance with yes, the car. Absolutely. Everything is about learning. And uh, it really took me seven years. Seven years to? To win. To win. Yeah. And, and but you was, did it. Yeah. Uh, but it was seven years basically losing. And I know that you also, also had a few hard accidents, but every time with a lot of courage you came back. Again, you know, I was, I was unfortunate to have an accident, but you're right. I had some serious ones, and when I cracked my skull uh, in Australia, 
uh, and and uh, it took me many many weeks to to step out of the hospital and and uh, and come back to normal life. Uh, and then when you start talking about coming back for racing, that was again different. So I I'm going through quite a quite an interesting career in Formula One. I, I experienced a great glamour. Uh, I uh, experienced uh, life-threatening accidents. Uh, and I gone through a lot of different uh, motions, moments in my life, which are uh, great. Yeah. They are part of your life. Exactly, this is the life of a champion. Exactly. Sacrifices, disciplines, passion, but exactly. achievements as exactly. well. In your profession, in your passion, there are injuries, there are risks, what you need to yeah. take to put yourself on a limit. Uh, and, and But without those, you're not going to be a champion. You have to fight through to be strong mentally. You need a yeah. great team, you need a great yeah. support, it's a teamwork and that's why it's really fascinating. Exactly and this is really the meaning of our award because we uh, award great champions not only for their results in sporting field but first of all as men or women that could be you know champions in life and for sure you are a champion in life. Oh, thank you for those words and the and, uh, uh, Legends uh, Award. Uh, when, I, when I received information and, and uh, my interest for this kind of award, I was completely like, wow. I was like, this is really cool. I would never, never say no. Oh, because wonderful. Because uh, I lived Monaco for many years and I know how good place it is. Uh, I know your involvement. Uh, I'm sure your team is creating absolutely fantastic event. Thank you so much, Mika. And, and uh, it's great to be part of it. Thank you so much to be with us, part of the Oscar of Sport. Thank, Thank you. you.